welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. If you've been listening, you will have heard the first chapters of one of the great eras of history, the Golden Age of Egypt. Today, another look at the beautiful and willful Queen Nefertiti and her inspired pharaoh, Akhenaten. Both monarchs, 1400 years B.C. Both rebelled against the superstition that everything you did was watched over by a separate god. The farmer had his, the sailor another, the mother prayed to her god, all save the sickly and the poor. Not a single Egyptian god protected them. General Horonrab. What brings the general of my army here? Noble Pharaoh, my scouts report that the son of the Hittite king has set out for Egypt with an armed escort. We shall welcome him with open arms. That would be a mistake. He is planning to take over your throne. Oh, that is not possible. The, the prince is our friend. You have no friends, O Pharaoh. Only enemies. <laughs> drama, The Cobra Strikes, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by G. Frederick Lewis and stars Tammy Grimes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Nefertiti, queen during the golden age of Egypt, has been an enigma to scholars for hundreds of years. But she did live and love, and with Akhenaten, her young husband, tried to turn the minds of Egyptians around. This world of the golden past has recently been visiting museums in American cities. Overnight, we have become aware of its wealth and pomp and mysterious rituals. Let the queen take you back to those days. The most tragic day of my life was the day my own father had to be put to death for plotting to kill my husband, the pharaoh. My father, the prime minister, was not the only one who thought Akhenaten weak and unable to rule. What no one understood was he believed in persuasion, not persecution. And so the two of us traveled from Thebes to Luxor to speak to the people face to face and tell them that they were being deceived. Husband, it's getting dark. Let us return to the palace. Oh, Nefertiti, I'm talked out. I've been preaching and exhorting my people to forget the false gods. They won't listen. Shall we go home? Oh, oh you take the reins. I'm too tired. Oh! Do you know what I think? We're making a mistake. In fact, two of them. First, we're begging the people to listen. You are the pharaoh. A pharaoh doesn't beg his subjects. He commands. Issue a decree. Tear down the old beliefs. I cannot order all the temples to be destroyed without giving my people an alternative. You're giving them an alternative. One god. Aton, god of the sun. But I haven't convinced them. Words won't do it. I think I know why so few people believe in your one God. You do? They see their King Akhenaten and their Queen Nefertiti speaking in the marketplaces. And they can't understand what their ruler is doing there. To them, there is only one explanation. You must be mad. And I must be mad also. Yes. Yes, they won't accept a king who walks the streets with them. I, uh, I think there's a way. Become one of the common people. We disguise ourselves from head to foot and then walk into the hills behind Thebes and sit with them. Yes, yes. Start by convincing the beggars, the, the blind, all of those who live up there. Exactly. The abandoned people, too old or too sick to work. The homeless. Do you think these outcasts would believe in the one God? What have they got to lose by listening or believing? They have nothing. <laughs> We're back in the palace courtyard. What do you say to my plan? Persuade the army of nobodies. Hmm. Yes, I, I think we should try. It would be a beginning. And if I can persuade them, others would follow. An hour ago, I was exhausted and I despaired. You've given me the spirit to go on trying. Akhenaten and I found some ragged clothes and dirty, much-used sandals. 
One night, we walked many miles into the hills, and they sprang to life with dozens of little fires around, which the blind, the old, the infirm, the rejected sat to warm themselves. Have I seen you at this fire before, brother? No, you have not. Uh, Is that young man your brother? Yes, I am. Under what name do you pass? Aknotten. Oh, like the Pharaoh himself. Friends, are you aware that we are honored with a distinguished visitor this night? This is Brother Akhenaton. <laughs> Sister Clipper, raise your crutch and salute to Brother Akhenaton. Never heard of him. Who is he, Brother Baker? Oh, idiot. Your mind is as weak as your foot. Don't you know that name? The same as the Pharaoh's. Uh, Brother Akhenaton, you are both welcome. This is a privilege. With a name like that, you should be king of the camel dung beggars. Why should he be king? What's he done for us? Well, what has any king done for us? But we live on the deaf, the mute, the sick, the poor. <laughs> we live on. Hmm. Old Amenhotep is dead, they say. And his son is king. What's his name? If you would listen, Sister Clipper, you would know. Akhenaton is his name and also the name of this neatherd here. <laughs> and he is going to tell us how he became king. <laughs> Aren't you, brother? <laughs> you you are all laughing and joking sitting around this fire. Is no one serious here? Oh, 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 oh. life is serious. <laughs> if we don't laugh at it, brother Akhenaton, it makes fun of us. Life makes a joke of us beggars. <laughs> Life makes us die. Yes, I watched them bury the pharaoh I'm in hotel. They didn't see me. Did I ever tell you? Uh, we have heard your stories before. Uh, but how about you, brother? Uh, tell us of your travels. But I was there. I saw the funeral. I don't know that what I have to say is what you want to hear. Of course it is. Go on, speak to them. Oh, tell a story. Make a speech. Oh, king. <laughs> they buried old Amenhotep in three layers of solid gold. I was there. I watched. Gold as thick as your hand. And jars of ointments and boxes of food for the dead pharaoh to eat on the long journey to eternal rest. And then I buried my father in the desert. But I didn't bury him deep enough, so he never ate in eternity. The desert jackals found his body and made a meal of him. Now, is that just? Is that a religion worth believing in? That only the man of property or position can afford life after death? That only a nobleman is buried in anointed linens and laid to rest in a golden tomb? And all the others, like you... You have to take your chances in the desert. Uh, That was a good speech. Let my brother go on. He isn't finished. I was lost. And Atom, the sun, found me. How were you lost? I was made to descend into the bowels of the earth, and I I could not find my way out. And then I saw a light. It was Atom, the sun god, showing me how to escape. I followed his rays, and I shall always follow... I say to you, if you believe in this one God, he will comfort you. He will rescue you. Why live like this? Why lurk in the darkness? Outcast. He asks too many questions. Let us all walk into the light. Look to the glorious eye, the sun, and be free. Get him out of here. He isn't funny. Hey, Brother Akhenaton, you'd better sit down or go away. Brother, stop now. Please. No, friends, there is nothing funny about starvation about poverty? If the gods are so just and so powerful, why are you poor and sick and homeless? I'll tell you. Because those old gods have no strength. They are feeble. Nothing. Stone statues in the dark. Only Aton, the god of the sun, can help. Ah! Who threw that stone? Someone threw a stone at my brother. Well, I warned you, brother. We don't want to hear any more. Friends, I I am your king. Pray, pray with me at dawn. Atan will protect us all forever. No more preaching. Here's a stone for your pain. (laughs) Akhenaten, we must leave here. They don't wish to listen. We must go. Hurry. And don't come back. What's that? Uh, A jackal roaming the hills looking for something to eat. I know prayer to the sun god would make life easier, even for them. Oh, if only I could convince them. 
Before I've even been on the throne one year, I'm a failure. Because no one believes you or pays attention. A stone wall of ignorance. How does one go around it? What keeps us here in Thebes, husband? Responsibility. I'm thinking. A pharaoh must set the example. He must show the way. I know that. If I were the sun god, and my subjects were spurned in the old cities, I, Aton, would say, Akhenaten, build me a new place where I can be worshipped in peace. A new place? My great-great-grandfather built the temple at Karnak. I could... I could build a new temple to Aton. Set the example. And Egypt will clamor at our gates. Build not only a temple, but a city. A new place. A new city. I want a child, Akhenaten. I want it to be born where he belongs. Where he is welcome. A firstborn. My wife. My precious golden wife. Salutations to your majesty. Oh, get General Horonrab, what brings you here? Necessity. I set out yesterday at dawn to find you. Now let me not waste a moment. My scouts have reported that the son of the Hittite king, Prince Ananza, has set out for Egypt with an armed escort. We shall welcome him with open arms. I said armed escort. Thousands of soldiers. It doesn't sound like a peaceful visit. Uh, my thoughts exactly, my lady. What are you saying? That there is a plot to put this foreign prince on the throne of Egypt. Oh, I cannot believe that. The prince and his father are our friends. You have no friends, Pharaoh. Only enemies. I know the Hittites. I'm sorry you have no faith in my judgment. But if it was your intention to stop this visit of the prince, I hereby order you not to. That is your pharaoh's wish. Now, I shall leave you. I see another campfire further up the hill. There are more that I need to talk to. Wait for me here, Nefertiti. Is it true what you say, Hornrod? That we should fear for our lives? I am sorry the great pharaoh puts more trust in prayers than swords. I know what I must do. Stop the Hittite prince from his march on Thebes? No question. It is the only way. Hornrab, dear friend, you're taking your life in your hands by disobeying Akhenaten. That is my decision. I would rather die on the field of battle than be ambushed by the Hittites at home in bed. Akhenaten has led, has led too much of a, a protected life. He knows little and cares less for war. But this time, Egypt deserves more of me than... Blind obedience. Egypt in that golden age was always prey to invasion from a neighboring state. Those like the Egyptians who have unlimited gold have to this day had to be on the alert. Then too, both Nefertiti and Akhenaten were too young and inexperienced to understand how to rule over the two Egypts bearing two symbols, the south the vulture, and the north, the cobra. I shall return shortly with Act Two. These fantastic people speaking from the past, how much of what they began is part of our lives today? Let me tell you. The 12-month calendar is an Egyptian invention, as are the 365 days. Those five extra days at the end of the year were celebrated as birthdays of the gods. Ethical values, or laws as we call them, the alphabet, and great architecture, sculpture, and painting all began in Egypt. Particularly, a beautiful head of a queen fashioned and colored from life, the head of Nefertiti. That night, as I stood on the edge of the Nile with a man not much older than myself, General Horanran, I remembered we had been children together. Even then, I played being soldier, and he was the general. He'd grown up, become a warrior, and the day I became queen, Horanran was made a real general. He said goodbye to me and returned to his headquarters in Memphis. My commanders, our aim, as always, is the protection of Egypt. Our enemy, as I believe you all know, is an army of Hittites advancing upon our borders. Now, our plan is to intercept them with a lightning strike by fast chariots in open country. General, may I suggest... Yes, certainly, Commander Horry. In Cobra Squadron 1, I have 200 archers trained to fire accurately from a moving chariot. 
We could approach the Hittite at a fast pace, then wheel quickly, passing alongside their troops, fire our arrows, and then retreat. Good, good. Uh, Commander Templer, how many in Squadron Cobra 2 can fire at a target from a moving chariot? 300, I'd say, General. Mm. Excellent. 500. Each man will carry enough arrows in his chariot, enabling him to make three separate passes at the enemy. I'd like to suggest that uh, my men proceed Commander Horry's... Oh, no, just a moment, Templar. This is too serious a matter for bickering and squabbles. Now, Horry will go first, then Templar. Our main object, I will tell you, the Hittite prince is Ananza himself. Now, instruct each man in your squadron, the prince is the main target. Well, that will mean destroying some of his escort. I'll leave the details to you. Now, this is to be hit and run. Do you understand? Hit and run. I want the prince dead. The Hittites thrown into confusion and not one of our men taken alive. This is a secret operation. I don't quite understand, General. Not one of our soldiers must be captured and live to report, even under torture, that this was an officially planned action. Let the enemy believe they were ambushed by the Bedouins or bandits. Whatever they will. But not the Cobra Command of North Egypt. Would we not do better with a straight cavalry charge? I see you have not understood the general, Commander Horry. The close engagement always results in riders being brought down. The general wants to leave behind no prisoners. Understand? That's enough. Give no quarter, show no mercy, inspire your men to venom. The cobra's venom. The poison of our attack. It shall be our battle cry. The cobra strikes. Mariani, I have something vital to tell you. It affects my life. Akhenaten and I believe it will affect the very life of Egypt herself. And it will affect your life. Has it something to do with the days you both disappear from the palace and go into the hills? My husband and I have come to a decision. We have decided to build a new capital of Egypt. A new... But where? We don't know. We shall travel down the Nile to find a place. It may be very far from Thebes. A city where we can worship the one god out on the sun. A city not bent down with old ideas, where citizens can come and breathe freely and pray freely. A city of beauty and life. Mariani, I am asking you to take your little sisters and come with us. Is it to be for always? For always. This uh, new city, how can it be different from Luxor or Memphis or Thebes? There will be freedom. Freedom? What difference can it make to me? What difference will it make to poor people? Friends of mine who, who live in the hills behind Thebes. In the city of truth, there will be no poor people. There will always be the poor. No fine tombs for the poor. No promise of eternal life. Only a nameless grave. Mariani, please put those thoughts aside. Come with us. I don't know what I would do without you. You don't believe me, do you? I have seen poverty and sickness. You haven't felt the sadness on the anniversary of your parents' death. To look for their graves, to bring flowers. And there is no trace in the desert of where they were buried. Yes, Nefertiti, I'll come with you. I would accompany you to the ends of the earth. I wish you hadn't talked to me about unmarked graves in the pool. Nefertiti. You wish to become a good queen. Then you must know that in truth there is sadness. And only if you know the truth can you become a good queen. I've been waiting for you, Templar. Come into my tent. Oh, I cannot remember the Sinai Desert ever being as hot as this. Uh... I've received word from my scouts that they've spotted Prince Ananza on the Sinai Desert near our frontier. Ah, his men, are they well armed? Battle doesn't seem to be on his mind at all. He stands high in his chariot, dressed in gold. What follows him? Two caravans containing gifts. And in front? His own bodyguards. So, the troops are well to the rear. Well, half a mile, I'd say. Hurry. 
I have an idea. I know the general said my squadrons would strike after yours. What do you say we join up and send all of them down together? <sighs> Good idea. One sweep, we could wipe them out. One pass, and we disappear into the dust of the desert. They won't know what hit them. Welcome home to Memphis, my dear Templar, and you too, Horry. It's been a while since I've seen you. Uh, what have you been up to? Oh, what, what do you mean, General? Well, I uh, understand some foreign prince was attacked in the Sinai Desert. Uh, heard about that? Uh, there are spies everywhere. We may be watched. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, General, I uh, did hear a rumor... Too bad. A wonderful man, I understand, this prince. Uh, what did you say his name was? Uh, you know anything, Commander Horry? Well, um, <clears throat> a little. It seems the Hittites happened to be crossing the frontier in El Gahab, and what they thought was an Egyptian desert patrol turned out to be a band of archers. The prince himself fell under many arrows, and in the confusion, the attackers disappeared. Oh, so uh, nobody knows who they were? Nobody. Not a soul. Oh, terrible. Terrible. What a sad story. I believe the prince was a great friend of our pharaoh. He, he will be so distressed to hear this. I can't believe it. Messenger, get out of my sight before I lose my temper and you lose your head. Akhenaten. Get out! Akhenaten, husband, whatever is the matter. Oh, don't ask me. I've had a difficult enough day without this treachery. Treachery? Do you remember Horenrab asking me whether he could intercept the Hittite prince because he believed it was part of some plot to overthrow our throne? Yes, I seem to. Prince Ananza is dead. He's been ambushed in the Sinai on his way to Thebes. I, I have just received the second report. Cobra chariots. Oh, the disgrace of it. What will any foreigner think that he isn't safe on the Sinai because it belongs to Egypt? I set for Horonrab to explain. I know him. If anyone in the army is responsible, there'll be stiff punishments. I don't want revenge on the guilty. I want explanations. I cannot believe Horonrab would deliberately disobey me. Yes, it is hard to believe, mighty uh, ruler, isn't it? Um, come in. Come into our chambers. So, you wonder about the death of Prince Zananza. I did also. Perhaps it was a band of Bedouins. Uh, yes, I thought that a possibility also at first, but it appears nothing was stolen. Two caravans of gifts are at this very moment standing in the desert, guarded, of course, right there where the Hittites left and ran away. No. No, it was not murder and thievery. I hold you responsible, General. And, and so you should, my king. It was an unfortunate mistake. A few days ago at Army Headquarters at Memphis, I investigated the entire incident. A mistake? Is that what you call it? Please, please, I beg you, hear me out. One of our Cobra squadrons exceeded their orders. They should have merely halted the prince and his men, examined their credentials, and then let them pass. But through an error in judgment, they attacked without warning. The uh, commander has been disciplined. Disciplined? How? Well, I posted him to a most desolate spot on the Asian frontier... Uh, Khufu, do you know of it? Is that all? Was that your only punishment to a commander who has brought such disgrace upon the name of Egypt? Uh, my queen, I am not a disciplinarian at heart. What? I suppose it's best. You, you showed him mercy. I did indeed. General, the queen and I are embarking upon a trip down the Nile in the new royal barge. I want you to accompany us. For what purpose? To guard your pharaoh and his queen. I understand. Am I excused? You are. Queen Nefertiti, royal king, good day. Why did you do that, Akhenaten? Do what? The signed general to do a corporal's work. There are plenty of palace guards. I have my reasons. You belittle him. Possibly. His explanation of the death of the Hittite prince didn't please you. It won't please the king of the Hittites, either. We have most certainly gained an enemy. We launched the splendor of Aton. The new royal barge, and with our servants and their families, started downriver. 
Akhenaten was intent on finding the exact right place for the new city. After what seemed like weeks, we anchored near Hermopolis on the eastern bank of the Nile. Akhenaten was rowed ashore, and as the sun gave way to the moon, I waited on the deck with Mariani. Oh, how beautiful it is with the Nile flowing gently past us. Mariani, Mm -hmm. you don't know what it's meant to have you by my side. Especially now. Oh, I've attended you for a good many years, Nefertiti. How quickly it all happens. I become a queen. Then I live in a palace. Married. Then suddenly uprooted. Here on this barge with a husband, I still hardly know. Has it been less than a year? How old you can grow in such a short time. I love you, dear Nefertiti. You're like another sister to me. You always have been. Then you should know how frightened I am, Mariani. To be queen of both Egypts is a heavy weight. And to be here, in a strange part of my country, about to build a new city, is the most frightening feeling of all. All I can see, no matter which way I look, are clouds and rain ahead. We know today from clay tablets discovered some 90 years ago, written in cuneiform characters, exactly what life was like in those days, 14 centuries B.C. These tablets tell us the tragedies and victories of starting a city from scratch. They are called the Amarna tablets, after the name given the city of truth by Akhenaten, Amarna. But I am getting ahead of my story. I shall return shortly with Act Three. king and queen, she bearing a child, set out to find a new and favorable spot in which they and their followers can practice a new religion, worshiping not a handful of gods, but one. Yet all is not peace and hope. Gold in Egypt is under constant surveillance and possible attack from poorer neighbors. Is it a calm before the storm? It is night. The royal barge is anchored in the Nile. 240 miles south of Thebes. Queen Nefertiti, alone on deck, examines her fears. The sun had gone to sleep behind the hills. In the distance, the calls of jackals and mountain lions roaming for food. My husband somewhere on that unknown shore with only a few sailors. I was terrified. What if something should happen to Aknat? I stood at the railing, waiting. Trying to see through the darkness. My queen. Oh, you frighten me. I am sorry, Nefertiti. It is only me, Horonrab. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, Horonrab. Is all well? <laughs> Almost everyone has retired for the night. Can you see Akhenaten's boat out there? Is he returning to the barge? No, I cannot. I can barely make out the bay, the shore, the cliffs behind. Did you pass Mariani? You mean your handmaiden? You know who I mean. Why do you ask? Because all through our journey, you seem to have made such a point of not talking to her. Don't you find her attractive? Uh, Nefertiti, why are you trying to make me aware of Mariani? I I wish I understood you. I think you do, Warren Rab. Better than most. Do you remember the day Akhenaten's father died and I brought you a kitten? Then... The day of your marriage had ran away, and I found it and brought it back. And then, do you... And then, your disobedience as a storyteller at the coronation festival. Why, out of all the priests in your court, did you order me to tell a story of wars and battles? And why didn't you tell me what I wanted to hear? Why do we hurt each other? If you had asked me that question the first few weeks of my marriage, I might have given you an answer. But not now. Now you love your husband, the pharaoh. It makes it easier to love the man that has been arranged for you to marry. I understand. Good night. Sleep well. Are you angry? No, no, no. I have done my duty for the night. I've made my rounds. The queen is in good spirits. I shall go to my quarters and await the return of the king. You are angry. 
What am I doing here? I belong with the army, not in this, this, this floating golden temple playing nursemaid and night watchman. It was my husband's idea, General, not mine. He wanted you with him. He was angry at the death of Prince Ananza. I could see through that. Any foot soldier could have played guard on this barge. He did it to humiliate me, and I shall not forget this. And don't forget either that Akhenaten is your pharaoh. It's difficult for me to be angry with you, Horenrab. I've known you too many years. I, I am tired of the king's gains. I take my generalship seriously. Yesterday, one of my men rode out from Hermopolis to tell me that foreign troops are massing in the harem. Now, what would that mean to his majesty? An invasion. Of a sort. That upstart Prince Aziro has a secret alliance with the Hittites. Now, I know it. And the Hittite king? Oh, he'd give anything to even the score for the death of his son in Sinai. We have enemies everywhere. More than we need. But if we do nothing, Aziru will sneak into Syria dressed like an ordinary traveler, and before you know it, he'll be dictator. Syria will fall into his hands, and Egypt will be next. And here I sit, hundreds of miles from Thebes on a rudderless barge. I will speak to the pharaoh. I promise you, General. Nefertiti! Nefertiti! I found it! Ah, uh, Pharaoh, is that you? I found it. I found the ideal place for the city of truth. Sailors, look sharp! When the rope is thrown from the Pharaoh's boat, make it fast and then pull gently. Nefertiti, remember, whether we believe in many gods or one, in this world there is only one life or death. If we let down our guard, Egypt could disappear from the face of the earth. <laughs> It's been a long search, but I found it. This place has everything. One would hardly have to landscape it. Trees, natural avenues, wonderful. Now we shall have to organize. You don't seem nearly as enthusiastic as I thought you would be. After all, founding of Amana was your idea. Amana? Yes. That is its name. It, it just came to me. Amana, a resting place of the gods. Amana. We shall need much more than enthusiasm. A little realism. If you and I are going to hold this empire together, it can't be all prayers to one god. Who has been talking to you, Horanrab? He sees dangers, and you don't want to look. I don't care what he sees, or what he says. It, it is not enough to deploy troops and garrison cities... If I can make the peoples of Egypt and its dominions have one solid, true religious worship, then, then we could have a safe and enduring society. I'll make a bargain with your husband. You build the temples, I'll build the city. Well, what do you know about architecture, street planning, viaducts, water? What do you know about anything? What I don't, I can find out. What I can't do, I'll have done by the best craftsmen in our world. The barge was made fast to shore, and for many weeks that followed, it would become our home. I persuaded Akhenaten to release General Horenrab to return to Thebes. Neferatiti, how did you accomplish it? I told my husband you were the only person into whose hands I would entrust my list of architects needed here to transport at least a thousand workers downriver. Well, I, I have underestimated your talents, Neferatiti. The most important of all on that list is Beck, the master architect. Hoyenrab, I want you personally to convince him he must drop everything he is doing at Karnak and tell him I have a city for him to build at Amana. Oh, you are a sly one. Am I, uh, expected to return here to Amana? We never got round to talking about it, the pharaoh and I. Oh, so if I happen to rejoin my army at Memphis, I shan't be missed? It's quite natural for a general to be with his army, isn't it? And if the army just happens to run into some foreign troops in Nahari, and a certain Prince Azero is mysteriously kidnapped or killed... We shall have our hands full here in Armana, General. I don't think you need any special orders to perform what you know is your duty. My queen. Then this is goodbye. Who knows? So be it. May Aton... The sun god shine on you. In the weeks that followed, I worked with Chief Architect Beck. 
But it seemed for every two steps we went forward, we fell three steps back. Queen Nefertiti, you're asking for too much to be done in too little time. Wherever we build, we're constructing on sand, and sand can move. So every time we excavate, we must reinforce. Let me show you on the master map. It's not excavations or reinforcing that concerns me now. You and I agreed on the location of certain buildings and certain streets, and where are they? Right here, on the master plan. I'm not talking about marks on plans. I'm talking about mud bricks, mortar. It's here. It's all there. Don't make me angry, Beck. My orders are not being obeyed. I, I guarantee you everything is on the plans. Will you kindly step out in the balcony with me? Uh, beautiful day. Now, let me point out something to you that is on a plan, perhaps, but nowhere else. Look to your right. Where is the street of flowers? That's on the plan. Well, we haven't yet. Uh, the, the surveyors found that... The, the, the... And over there, my dear Beck, at right angles... Where is the Avenue of Palms? But as I've been telling you all along, Queen Nefertiti, the land is on the arid side. What happened to the irrigation canals? The rain storage dam. They're on the master plan. But, but I... It doesn't concern me how you get fresh water to Amana. By the pitcher full from Thebes if you have to. Now then, please, one more little look at something else. On the far side, facing the mountains. My dear Beck, what are those? Slums? That definitely is not on the plan for our mana. Temporary workmen's houses. They'll be torn down to make room for the pylon to be erected there. Oh? As soon as the granite slabs arrive by barge in two or three months, I assure you those shacks will be removed by then. Those shacks will be torn down immediately. Beck, I charge you. You will give every workman 500, 1,000, 2,000, however many there are. You will give every workman in Amarna the day off, a week off if necessary. Could you tell me why suddenly they're all on holiday? You will also give each worker all the mud brick, the wood, and the tools they'll need. And they will be required to build their own permanent houses. You will design streets and avenues for them to build on. Understood? That is my decree. Nothing temporary. You will tell your workmen to build for permanence. That's impossible. Indeed. How can I give our entire workforce a week off and yet continue to construct avenues and so forth? It's a problem I know you can solve, my dear Beck. I do not like to hear what cannot be done. Only what can. General Orenrab, welcome to Memphis. Uh, we did not expect you at headquarters so soon. I didn't expect you at all, actually. What are you talking about, Templar? Why shouldn't I return to Memphis? You've been gone a long time, General. We commanders had more or less written you off. Oh, you had, had you? Hmm. You thought I would just retire and leave the command of the Egyptian forces to you and Hori? You've been away for a very long time. Of course, everyone understood. Nefertiti, our royal queen, needed particular protection. Is that sarcasm? Well, general, one hears things. Does what? Well, what does one hear? That the general is quite a favorite of Queen Nefertiti herself. Only the queen? Not the king also? I would say one hears that the general is more a favorite of the queen. Say what you mean, Templar. As you wish. General, you have been observed very close. Very close indeed with our queen on the royal barge. It has become much talked about here in camp. Oh, and what do they say? The men. Well, put the men aside for a moment. What do you say, Commander Hori? I wish that it was you on the throne of Egypt. Me? So do I. Yes. You, General. Then you could have Nefertiti. And we could have a strong, warring pharaoh. I've heard enough. I am here because of the threat of foreign troops in Naharin. Place your men on the alert. It's good to have you here, General. Oh, why do we bother dreaming about you being king? He'll be on that throne long after we've died in some battle for Egypt. Templar? Who knows? Hmm. Horin Rab, a pharaoh. A dream? No. Not impossible. 
No, not at all. I really don't believe that if something should happen to Akhenaten, that Nefertiti would mind sharing the throne with me. And so ended the second year of my reign. My husband, the pharaoh, with his eye on eternity. Myself, Nefertiti, with an eye only for today. And Horan Rath. Oh, yes, I knew it. With an eye to the future. Over the months, there would be many, many attacks on Egypt. But always our soldiers could put fear and arrows into the hearts of our enemies. But this strong, masterful soldier, what arrows did he intend for my heart? Although we have tried to recreate the lives of these unique Egyptians, we have had to depict them in our own terms and in our own language. But Nefertiti and Akhenaten and their subjects must be looked at not from our end of the time scale, but against their primitive background. They were a primitive people with very special talents who left an extraordinary legacy. More on this when I return shortly. talking about what distinguishes civilizations. It boils down to the material and the mind. Which do you worship? The Egyptians adored precious stones, unknown gods, and gold. I often ask myself when I hear modern music, see modern dancing, observe our admiration of the shiny, the new, our love of power, of powerful engines, if we today aren't a lot more primitive than we care to admit. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Russell Horton, Earl Hammond, E.V. Juster, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. This is the voice of the Rocky Mountain West. Radio 85.